Let us quieten our hearts and prepare for worship service. The Lord is in his holy temple. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showed his handiworks. Day unto day uttered speech, and night unto night showed knowledge. Truly great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised and worshipped. Blessing the opening hymn, O worship the King. in heaven, truly you are great and mighty, worthy to be praised and worshipped. We thank thee that we can continue to gather and worship you freely in this manner. We thank and praise you for protecting and watching over us, caring for us and delivering us from the evil one daily. We plead for the precious blood of Jesus Christ to cover and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. Forgive us of our transgression against you. This morning, as your people gather to praise and worship you, may our humble worship and praises be as sweet incense unto you, O Lord. We pray that you will be pleasing in thy sight. Comfort those that need comfort. Heal those that need healing. Sanctify us through thy word, and bless us according to thy riches in glory. 
edify and quicken our spiritual life. We commit the rest of the time before thy throne of grace. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray that it be done according to your will. Amen. A very warm and blessed welcome to Harold BP Church virtual worship service. We pray that you be blessed, edified, and comforted through this worship service. Let us praise Jesus now, for he cared for us. Communion Sunday. Let us prepare and examine ourselves for the bread and the cup. Meditate upon the hymn and focus on our Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for us. Nothing but the blood.
pastor will lead the Holy Communion, pastor. We praise God for such a time like this to come close to our Lord Jesus in the partaking of the Holy Communion. Oh, precious sister, flow that makes me white as snow. And this is what the Lord has prepared for us, the Holy Communion, that we must uh, partake of this whenever we can. And now we can through this uh, virtual uh, service. As we have prepared our hearts through the singing and in the heart of the hymn, and also as we uh, pray, let us partake of the bread that represents the uh, body of Christ. The cup represents the precious blood of our Lord. By faith, we know our sins will all be forgiven. Let us uh, close our eyes and bow our heads as I ask the Lord to bless the elements. Let's pray. O oh Lord, bless these uh, elements that you have left for us, a sacrament of remembrance and also a representation of your grace. And it is uh, th these uh, partaking that we can be drawn close to you by faith. Bless, Lord, each one of us in our homes or even in the church here or anywhere we are in this worship that we can partake this and Lord, join our hearts together, even with your precious, precious presence. Bless us, make us right, and give us even the uh, strength of the Holy Spirit to live righteous lives for your name's sake. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The night before our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and then gave to his uh, disciples. Now this is together. If you would uh, like, just take the top, top part of the plastic, take your time, just tear it out. And the Lord Jesus, when you're ready, the Lord Jesus, says, take eat. This is my body, which is broken for you in remembrance of me. After supper, the Lord took the cup and gave to his disciples. Be a bit careful. Just rip the part, top part off, a bit of it. And Jesus says, This cup is a new testament in my blood. Drink it as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Let us thank God for, even this is called a Eucharist. Let's thank him. Thank you, Lord, for giving your life to us on the cross that is applicable and available for us when we receive you, even through this sacrament of the cup, <clears throat> cleanse us the past, the present wrongdoings and give us the strength to turn around, to repent, so that our lives be pleasing in your sight. We pray for the strength to welcome what, whatever that is uh, that may draw us away from you and give us, Lord, your blessings to be close to you. Bless our families, even as we pray for each one of our family members, that they will come close to you. Bless our church, even as it's a body of Christ, that we come together even next week for the worship in the building. May you, Lord, be with us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For scripture reading, we have uh, Brother Rodney Liu to read the scripture for us. Brother Rodney. 
A blessed morning to everyone. Today's scripture reading is taken from the Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Galatians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither of man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God, and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be same, some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man present to, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be a curse. For do I now persuade man or God? Or do I seek to please man? For if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Thank you, Brother Rodney, for reading the scripture for us. Today's sermon, entitled, Deliver Us From Evil, will be delivered by our very own pastor, Reverend Dr. Bob Fee. Pastor? Oh, do you realize that we have come to the seventh petition, and that is the last petition of the Lord's Prayer, even uh, telling us that uh, we soon will give glory to God in the doxology. I'd like to uh, tell you a story. Uh, first, uh, even uh, before I uh, share this uh, very wonderful uh, teaching uh, from the seventh petition of the Lord's Prayer. Deliver us from evil. It was in Perhaps uh, 10 years ago, this was a sermon shared in the Sermon Central uh, by one named uh, Daryl Ward. He shared that for 20 years, he was in darkness, in a realm of being perhaps deceived, but caught in the web of the evil one. He said that he was uh, not a church uh, worshipper, not even in the uh, Orthodox uh, church. Indeed, maybe he was born from this uh, Russian Orthodox church. But he was uh, with a punk group as a singer, and he was uh, one who called himself a uh, Pentis, believing of many gods, and also a new pagan. But he was uh, not spiritual. His life was morally chaotic. And he was one who sometimes went into certain mental and emotional roller coaster. And he was struggling all the time. However, when he was totally uh, drunk, perhaps for many days. 
as that was his dark side. He finally had to tell himself that he could no more lie, lie to himself or anyone, that he started to go to an Anglican church. And that's where a group prayed for him and exorcised the dark power that was in his life. He said nothing happened even after that. But one morning he woke up. He found, he found that his mind was so clear and the belief of God was just so wonderful to experience his presence. And then his eyes was open to know that there was an evil power all around him and in the world. So we see our Lord has uh, taught us to pray. The first three petitions to tell us to pray with uh, the Heavenly Father for His kingdom to come, for His will to be done on earth. Then comes our need. The fourth, give us this day our daily bread. And fifth is to forgive our transgressors or transpasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the sixth, lead us not into temptation. And there is a four, and this is very interesting. Four gives a little twist, perhaps. It gives us a different view, a view of something that we must know. And that is the seventh petition, deliver us from evil. We have uh, several questions to ask, you know, uh, regarding this uh, petition, is that uh, this is the last, but it is the climax of Lord's Prayer. Climax not for its own reason, but climax also that evil must be eradicated and that everything that, that we have done on earth is due to the first sin of our parents, Adam and Eve. And now the whole world has gone into turmoil and through the gospel, the Lord is restoring, restoring those who believe in him to establish his kingdom. And we also note that this is the object of Christ's coming. He has come to destroy the works of the devil. And finally, he is coming to judge even the angelic world with, uh, with uh, Satan. And in the final uh, judgment, that is the great white throne, uh, Satan, his angels, and all those who follow him will be cast into the lake of fire. So we are in that midst. And this Lord's Prayer covers comprehensively those uh, elements, those requirements, those fulfillment of present and the future of the kingdom of earth and the kingdom of heaven, of the works of man and the complete work of our almighty God. So we see then we can sing or even uh, pray that thy, thy is a kingdom, and glory and power forever and ever. But we ask, why deliver us from evil? Well, I can say here that there are perhaps three reasons we cannot deliver ourselves. If we do not believe that there is evil, or saying that evil is nothing but the natural wrong, natural misgivings, or a natural sight tracking. Or, or something that is not um, uh, natural at all, then everything we see here is just natural. But there is a supernatural evil that is around us. And we cannot deliver ourselves because this is spiritual. And that's why Paul said, who can rescue the wretchedness in me? Oh, wretched man that... I am who can save me from this. We must admit that. We can be very well for 
the next 20 years, next 40 years. But when it comes to a point, earlier or later, maybe when we are very, at very old age, we realize that we need to call on the spiritual power to help us. And that's where many come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is a living Savior who has conquered death and has conquered whatever that gone against him. And he is our conqueror. And we must turn to him because he is the only one who can deliver us. Now, we are trapped in our own sins. And that is uh, what James 1.15 tells us. That uh, when sin is conceived in us, then death comes. When it is swallowed, that uh, uh, lust, that uh, uh, seduction, then death will take place. So we are trapped and we want to live. And so therefore, in recognition of the evil or evil one will help us to turn to God for help. And then we must know also that we have a defeated wicked enemy, Satan, with the power of death according to Hebrews chapter 2, now was taken away even that Christ died on the cross, that he put away death. The devil can no more come around us to use death to fear us. How many such kinds of beliefs? Eh? You don't come, something happened to you. You will be cursed. You will, you will face death. That was the power of Satan. Many were captivated by him. Many were caught and with fear. They were under his control. However, we pray, deliver us from evil. And you know, all these times, since I believe in Lord Jesus, some 50 odd years ago, in uh, 68, I've realized the power of Jesus' name. In his name, some have seen their lives cleansed from spiritual darkness. In his name, I have seen evil spirit coming out of men's uh, body through if they're screaming or through their violent action of the body. Powerful name of Jesus. So Jesus has taught us this prayer when the disciples said, can you teach us to pray? So Jesus said, pray in this manner, not as one that uh, is to be repeated without meaning, but one that is to be prayed with a true heart. Well, we need to uh, note that what is evil? Well, in the Bible, Old Testament, of us uh, in some verses that evil uh, are some kind of harm and a harm is that will discourage our walk in the Lord. So we must pray that no evil will draw us away from God. No physical harm can make us think that God is not with us. And we also must know that uh, sometimes uh, persecution Maybe the work of, I might, cannot say maybe, it is the work of the world and a Satan to discourage Christians from growing. How many times I've seen those who come to know the Lord Jesus, they, their work is well, their family is well, suddenly persecution comes. And suddenly they get a kind of sickness. But praise the Lord with prayer. These things go away very quickly. And then we know that this Lord's Prayer of Seventh Petition is true. Also, pray that we will be able to live for the Lord and not to sin that might lead to spiritual death. Well, Paul has said that those who want the Spirit are spiritual, but those who are carnal, they are spiritually dead. So we must pray that we will not fall into the trap that may give us a lot of guilty feelings, make us regret what we have done. 
now in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no regret because we walk in his will and he gives us the good fruits of life, the good fruits of the Holy Spirit, and therefore our life will be meaningful and abundant. So also one other very close interpretation is to deliver us from the evil. Now in Greek, this is substantive. Many commentators say, deliver us from the evil one, and that is Satan, who is the soul's adversary. Of course, he's invisible. And those only who are born again can sense, see, understand the Bible that he exists. But in the natural world, you cannot see that or interpret in different ways. So therefore, on one hand, we do not perhaps uh, blame the world for saying, oh, there's no such thing. It's a myth. But when we are really born again, we know that this agent who fell from the first estate of God, the first principle of holiness and righteousness in, in Ezekiel chapter 28 tells us he was a very bright angel. He was perhaps the, the uh, highest, utmost uh, angel. He fell because he rebelled against God due to his pride. And he has become the enemy of our soul. So here, the evil one. We must also say that the harm that may bring Christians away from the kingdom discourages uh, their hearts. It's from him. And also that the luring, the temptations, our Lord says, you know, Pray, lead us not into temptation. It is he who wants to draw these uh, who believe in Jesus into temptations so that at the end, they will be like uh, perhaps Esau forsaking their birthright and then sitting and pull all of them into the lake of fire. This is the wickedness of Satan. Satan can give a man possessions luxury, beauty, and all the things he delights, either in objects or in human form. His end is to draw men and women together with him into God's condemnation and finally to hell. So this prayer is in fact a very powerful one for us, a protection for us daily. These lessons, three of them come from the understanding of the seventh petition. We are engaged in spiritual warfare against evil. Secondly, we are encouraged to trust God for spiritual strength. And thirdly, we are in cooperation with God against evil evil. Let's consider the first. We are engaged in spiritual warfare against evil. This, in fact, is what the Paul has said, we, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against uh, the powers of darkness in high places. This is uh, a huge understanding that we have the world's empire, superpower, uh, super nation, and also great nations. But there is also a spiritual empire that is of darkness, and we are there to wrestle against him. Of course, with spiritual weapons, and this is a spiritual warfare, when you are born again, you are in it already. So we see that we must be aware of the devil who roams around to devour carnal Christians or believers. James warns us, but Peter says even clear, clearly that Satan walks about and 
like a roaring lion, and devours those who are unaware. Meaning that those who know Jesus, after that, the world catches up with them. And there they have all the time into the luxury, comfort and cares of the world. Then we uh, see that the devil draws this into his dent. And uh, they may be in it for 10 years, 20 years, just like Daryl Ward. 20 years, he said. He did not even know. But then he could not lie to himself anymore. He must seek help. So some Christians who have been maybe out of church, maybe not reading a Bible, and maybe thinking that they have the best thing in life, but deep inside, there is a deep sorrow before bed, struggling, cannot sleep, even sleep with all kinds of you know, funny dreams or maybe dark dreams or fearful dreams. Could this person or person say, yes, the evil one has devoured me and I must come back to the Lord. I must pray, deliver me from evil. This is our adversary. It is a figure of speech, but it tells us that the roaring lion is a very cunning beast. It is one that prowls slowly against the prey until the, the prey is not aware, thinking everything is calm. He will pound onto this little creature who might be very fast in this running, but the lion will outrun this prey. So we must put on the full arm of God to guard against Satan's fiery dust. This is the shield of faith. Of course, we have the helmet of salvation, the knowledge of the fact we are children of God. We have the breastplate of righteousness that is practiced by right. We can do all the good works and we have the God of truth. We have all the doctrines. But it is the shield of faith that protects us against the fiery darts. And these are very, very painful once it strikes you and it will burn you. Put on this faith to believe, to trust in God, to put away those things that we say, hey, if I don't have this, I cannot have a luxurious life. This is a trap. But if put away, God will give you even a more comfortable, peaceful life in Him. So, we must have faith to follow the Lord. This is the armor that we are to put on. We also note that we need to put on the uh, shoes of peace, short, the gospel of peace. And then we need to have the sword of the Spirit. That is always ready with the Bible, always be reading, because we meet with all kinds of attacks daily from, well, the abrupts, those who are above us, and those who are below us. And also within ourselves, we must have the heart of the peace of God. We must have the faith, the belief, and so that all these attacks will not be able to hit into our soul. So God has provided this uh, armor of God for us. Are you wearing it daily? Are you exercising your Christian faith with this full armor? Just like you go out, even the first step out of your door, you must put on your mask. So first step out of our house, or when we wake up, we must put on the full armor of God. We are surrounded by evil. But yet we are not superstitious. We faith, we just ignore all these dark forces. If you hear a voice saying, calling you, and it's not a voice of Christ, just ignore. Many will say, oh, why is this voice? How, how is it that it is so sweet? Or how is it so frightening? There are so many voices that you go in the marketplace. 
but he just concentrate in talking to your friend next to you. So we take God as our friend speaking to us and his voice is always affirmed in the word of God. Now the second lesson, we are encouraged to trust God for spiritual strength. Spiritual strength comes through the meditation of God's word. It is through the prayer that we have. When young David was going to, into battle with Goliath, the nine-footed enemy that shouted blasphemous words against Jehovah, who told David, I will cut off your, your head and let your body to be eaten by birds. David said, the battle belongs to the Lord. Yes, the Lord will fight for us. We must trust in Him. We need to rest our strength in Him. And He will see us through. So we praise God for this teaching. Stand on the grace of our Lord Jesus. Be strengthened in His grace. That will be our strength in weakness. And His grace is sufficient for us. So therefore, we can be steadfast, immovable, and move forward in serving the Lord. Also, our weapons are not carnal, but divine power to destroy strongholds of the devil. Our weapons are not man's wisdom. It is not like some in some council. Hey, let us plan this because he is just too strong. If this fails, plan B. If not, then plan C. Now, this is carnal West weapons and have secret meetings. We stand firmly, honestly, telling the truth. We speak the truth in love. Then we can destroy the strongholds of the devil. If not, we will be used by him. Our power is by prayer to have hearts transformed. Our prayer is waiting for opportunities for the heart to open the door. And then Christ can come into a person's life. And that is our weapon. We have this every Thursday night at our prayer meeting. Now we have more uh, people coming into prayer. So we want to encourage each one of us to come. You may not ask to pray or you don't want to pray, but you can join us. Like when one member prays, Lord, uphold the church, uphold this family, the one who is sick. Then you say, Amen. Say, Lord, I join in prayer with this person. So it's not just one person, but a group. And you come in, there's an addition to the group. Where two or three are gathered in his name, in business, but much more in prayer, the Lord is with us. So let us see it. This is the weapon that God has given to us, a spiritual weapon, and then to know God's word. This is a testimony of a new convert. Just three weeks after she received the Lord, she was in great stress because someone was not following instructions, doing things that were just so wrong, so wrong that she was going to burst out. She was going to scream. But then the verse came. A well-controlled spirit can even take charge of a city. That's from Proverbs. Suddenly she discovered she was so calm. And then she saw the whole thing and, uh, and solved the problem. And that is the spiritual we weapon we have. Peace tranquility, and a steady heart. And God gives that peace that comes with wisdom. And then the word is spoken. So we see that there are all these evil things around us. But we are not superstitious. We can see them and we pray. Then God's word is the sword of the spirit that will prevail against the evil one. 
the example of our Lord Jesus in the wilderness was carried there by the Holy Spirit after 40 days in hunger. The beast, the tempter came. How did Jesus answer the three temptations that represents our whole life's temptation? By quoting Deuteronomy. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Thou shalt only worship Him. These are all the word of God. And then when he quote the Bible, the devil has no reply but to turn away. So, we know that uh, Peter says, resist him and he will flee from you. The third lesson is we are together with God in a fight against evil. So we are not alone. God is with us. The Father will help us to root, to destroy the roots of evil in our hearts. We are born as Psalm says, conceive uh, in our mother's womb, sin. In sin, uh, did I conceive uh, in my mother's womb, uh, David said. So we do not know what's in us. But when we grow older, we discover how to be a more angrier than normal. How is it that there's bitterness in our heart? How is it that there's jealousy? Jesus has taught us that if he gives us rest, he will help us carry our burden. And Paul has told us, be filled with the Spirit, not the in excess of wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And there he will grant us the fruit of the Spirit, so our Father will help us because He cares for us. And He will deliver us from the power of evil through the Holy Spirit. That is the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians. But this portion of uh, Galatians 5, 16 to 18 uh, are the works of the flesh that the following verses, the fruit of the Spirit, will destroy all of them. So we praise God that the solution is in our Lord Jesus. We are to coll collaborate with Him. We are to pray. And the first evil that must get out of our heart is bitterness, hatred, anger, jealousy, and all that well, we are faced with. So we praise God that He will deliver us. And He will deliver us from the work of evil by putting us in the kingdom to serve. So service is a way of overcoming the work of darkness. Serving is to help uh, others to enable uh, the church to function smoothly and then to extend his kingdom through the gospel sharing, going overseas to well support the evangelist preachers and pastors and the churches. When you do this, we are actually turning uh, 180 uh, degrees away from the kingdom of darkness. And God will bless us. But yet we know the more we serve God, the more the evil one will try to trip us. But when we walk close to the Lord, his tricks are nothing. But we will be more than conquerors. So therefore, the seventh petition gives us these three lessons. We are engaged in spiritual warfare against evil. We are encouraged to trust God in, for spiritual strength. We are in cooperation with God against evil. So, we must know the Lord's uh, prayer is to say that we are very precious in the sight of the Lord. He wants to protect us daily and this is very pointed, very specific, deliver us from evil. It can be harm, it can be discouragement, but it all comes from the prince of the power of the air who lays on our sight the last of the flesh and the last of the eyes and the bread of life. God protect us. Pray when you see all this and refrain, abstain, and then do something. His blessings are better than the world's goods 
all the world's benefit. Secondly, uh, he's always there to hear our prayers. Important to really be able to speak to the Lord anywhere, everywhere. You know that uh, Abraham, when he looked down into the Dead Sea, he, in fact, it was not Dead Sea yet. They were the king. They were the uh, cities where Lot and his uh, family was living in. There, the Lord said, because of the great wickedness, I am going to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities. Well, Abraham talked to God. He was there and said, please, save this because if there are 10 righteous men, and God said, okay, so God hears our prayer. And we need to also know that he wants us to have victory over the evil world, sin and the devil. Can a Christian overcome the world? Yes, daily. Certain of the things takes longer time. But don't give up. We must be patient also with ourselves, not only with those whom we are teaching or leading, but pray for them because some are caught in a bigger trap. It takes maybe 20 years to come, come out, some maybe 40 years. And there was one who, whom we minister, ministered to just two days ago. And there, after almost 50 years sharing the gospel, he said, I want to come to church. But he has the four, uh, four stage cancer. He, and after hearing Psalm 23, he was weeping. He said, I regret I didn't go to church. But now I still want to go to church. See, so he finally was freed. But then his body was too weak to come to church. But it was not too late. He was closer to Christ. The next thing is to ask him whether he wants to be baptized. So we must be victorious over the evil world, sin and the devil at a young age. Then our life will, as the Lord says, will be abundant and free. And finally, he has rewards within for us. The seven churches, all those who have overcome, whether it be evil, wrong doctrine, or deceit, and even we see uh, those who overcame the dark forces, he says, to the one who conquers, I will grant to eat a tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. And it's uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. To another, he gives the crown of life, he will be obedient unto death. Faithful unto death. That's chapter 2, verse 10. May God bless us to be conquerors in this prayer, to know that God works with us to overcome evil and to finally be in his kingdom and grow and bear the fruits of righteousness. May Lord bless us. Let us pray. Bless this message into our hearts, Lord that we have this very powerful prayer working with God in the Lord's prayer. Help us to be more than conquerors daily as you deliver us from evil. We pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. We have come to the end of the service. Thank you for being with us. Do join us again next week in church or online. May the Lord bless you and keep you.